The Chronicle thanks our 2023 Meet the Candidates sponsors. Ann Colton Films, Flossmore Station Restaurant and Brewery, Jonathan Kane Salon and Spa, and Tom Brabeck Law Office. With their help, HF voters will be well informed on Election Day, April 4th. My name is Chris Rydell. I am a former Homewood resident and current Flossmore resident, um, and I am running for the school board of Homewood Flossmore High School District 233. Early in my career, I was actually a high school teacher, and so I've got classroom education experience. Um, I also have started multiple businesses, spent many years at the University of Chicago, um, focused in the technology realm, um, innovation, emerging technology, helping folks around the campus um, really turn their ideas into reality using technology. Um, and currently, I am co-founder and CEO of a software company. I think that you know this election, from my perspective, is really about growth. Um, I think that the the district is doing some really great things, and, and I like the direction that we're moving in. I think that there's certainly a lot of challenges um, that we're going to have to address going forward, as many schools are. But I think that um, you know now is the time that we really have to double down on the things that we're doing right, and and make sure that we're focusing on you know, providing the, the best, very best educational experiences to all of our students and, and also making sure that, you know, we, we all recognize and acknowledge that great communities always have at the center of them great schools. And I think that this is a great community and HF is a great school and we need to make sure that we do everything we can to ensure that into the future. I think that, um, you know, there are lots of things that are, that our school has been dealing with in the past, right? I mean, we're coming off of COVID. I think that, you know, this is really sort of year two, year one was sort of a lost year when we went back, right? I think everybody was just trying to figure out, get their bearings. But I think, you know, things are moving in the right direction, but we need to continue to, to address. I think that, you know, we're moving into um, an interesting time from a uh, technological perspective. I think we need to continue to be innovative and be on the front end of innovation when it comes to education and when it comes to educating our students into the future so that they can become productive members of society. I think that that work never stops. You know, it, it, it's important for me that as a community we understand that that really is one of the functions of the board is to really be a sounding board and a, um, a resource to the administration, right? They are the professionals that are running our school, but our board is made up of people with a variety of backgrounds and a variety of, of uh, experiences that they can lend, um, you know, information and, and help the school move in the right direction based on um, you know the the knowledge and the experience that they have so I think it's critically important that and, and this was mentioned at the forum but I think it's critically important that we acknowledge that um, there are many definitions of success success from high school doesn't necessarily just mean you go to college it means that you are prepared for the next stage of your life and as I, I say this a lot but I think that you know it's really about um, creating members of society that generate value and and you know sometimes for many of our students that doesn't mean going to college and I think that we need to um, not only recognize it as a community but I think we need to acknowledge as a community that it's this is a valuable component of high school education is helping kids understand what is that best next step for them and providing them as many uh, experiences and as much exposure to what the possibilities are I think as you said the culinary arts program the automotive program, um, even you know the new science building. I mean, there are careers in STEM that don't necessarily require a four-year degree, right? There are plenty of there are plenty of opportunities out there. We've got you know community colleges in the area that provide programs that can get students into the next phase of their life. Um, and I think that it's important that we acknowledge that that is not only a viable, but in some cases, in many cases, in fact, I think it's a preferable path and uh, you know I know me personally when I was in high school it was not talked about it was not you know it was sort of you're gonna go to college and I think that you know while that m there may have been a time for that it's no longer um, it's no longer the appropriate sort of line right I think that especially you know given the community that we that we live in we need to make sure that HF is a resource to all of the students that we have not just the college bound students that we have from my perspective the primary thing that we can be doing you know Again, uh, not just recognizing and acknowledging and certainly communicating that there are these alternative pathways, but I think a primary thing that we can be doing is 
keeping an eye on what those pathways are over time because they will change, right? I mean, I think when I was teaching high school, um, toward the end of, of my tenure, what we were saying and hearing a lot was, we don't even know the jobs the kids are going to have when they graduate college. And I think that that's accelerated. I think, you know, we thought five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, we don't know what the jobs are going to be. I think if you look in society now, this has been all over the news. And, and you know, for people in technology, this is not a new thing, but, you know, artificial intelligence has been all over the news. The reality is um, there are things being invented and being even just conceived of now that will create jobs five years from now that our kids are going to you know they're going to have opportunities for so I think as a district as a community and certainly as a, as a board we need to be keeping our eyes on how are those things changing right you're always going to need you know mechanics electricians you know you're always going to need people in the skilled trades and some of those trades will continue on in in perpetuity but many of them will be brand new and we need to make sure that we're keeping our eyes on those and and understanding are there opportunities for how HF is a school um, and this community as a whole, are there opportunities for us to be, um, you know, shifting our focus or adding new programs or evolving the things that we're currently doing so that we can address them, right? If, if, if our goal is to be the premier school in the Southland, which I think that, I mean, for me personally, that is the goal, right? We want to be the draw um, for this community. If that's the goal, then we can never stop looking into the future. Certainly, we have to worry about you know, today and tomorrow and a month from now, but we need to be, you know, that's, that's tactics. A year from now, that's strategy. Five years from now, 10 years from now, that's vision. And we need to make sure that we are doing and balancing each of those things appropriately so that we don't get sort of caught on the back foot and go, oh, we probably should have been thinking about this, right? I mean, obviously that's a critical question. It's also an interesting question, right? Because you've got many competing priorities, and this is true with any organization. I think, I think it's, uh, it becomes acute at the school level because there's limited resources, right? And you have to make sure that you're being a good steward of those resources given what the goals and, and the, the vision of your school actually is. And I think obviously safety and security is a, is a primary goal. I think that you know, student learning and how you implement technologies into student learning is a primary goal. I think what I would say, don't let creativity be out of the mix. I think, I think a creative use of technologies um, can mitigate cost. Uh, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're always going to want to do things that are the cheapest or that are free, but you want to make sure that you are, you're, you're assessing what are the goals we're trying to accomplish and what are the various ways we can accomplish those goals and are there lower cost ways that are appropriate or are there things that we can't do because we have other priorities that we really need to focus on. I, I think, you know, from, from my perspective, one of the things that's important for me, we have to understand I think just as community members and as, certainly as members of a board or as administration in, in an organization in a, in a school, I think we have to understand the context that our students um, and our community for that matter, but certainly our students, the context in which they currently um, capture and assimilate information and are there ways we can build on top of that, right? I think that there's a lot of schools that, you know, many years ago went to a one-to-one -one program, right? Every, every student has a device. And I think that at the time, it made a lot of sense. But I think that just because it made sense in 2010 or 2012 or 2015, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the requirement in 2025 or 2030, right? I think cell phones are a perfect example. If you think about the advent of the smartphone, BlackBerry aside, I think if you look at 2008 when the iPhone was... Uh, you know, was brought to the market, it was a very expensive tool, it was very cool, but it had a very limited reach. The cost of technology goes down. If you think of it now, almost every human has in their hands, or a good proportion of the humans have in their hands access to a cell phone, even those who cannot afford a computer. So those are things to be thinking about, right? It, it doesn't mean that that provides the answer, but I think you can't take uh, creativity and ingenuity out of the equation when you're talking about how do we take advantage of technological advances and integrate those into our schools, whether it's for safety and security or for student learning or for community engagement or for any one of the other priorities that a school might have. Instructor, he's a professional musician. I think that you know the, the fine and performing arts I think are, are, are critical. They play a critical role. I do think that um, 
from my perspective as a, as a parent and as a community member, I think that um, it is important that we encourage all students to participate. I think that, it, you know, as you noted, there are plenty of studies that show that participation um, you know, in the fine arts does improve the overall student experience. That's one of the things that I actually appreciated the most about my kids' education at, at Home of Flossmoor was the focus on the whole student, not just the academic student, right? The opportunity for them to have so many different things that they can participate in. I think it gets a little bit more complicated when we think about, you know, how do we encourage versus require versus, right? Because the, again, this is one of those things that it, it's highly contextual. You have some, me personally, um, when I was, uh, I am a musician, but when I was in high school, did not want, was not comfortable participating in some of those programs. And, you know, had I been made to participate in them, how would I have, you know, felt about that? I, I don't know. I think that that's a personal, that's sort of a, a very personal thing. I think that one thing that we can do is we can certainly encourage or find a variety of ways to present the kids with these opportunities. The other thing that I would say though, even going back to you know, the comments about vocational education is, I also think we need a little bit more expansive definition of what it means to be involved in the creative arts. I think that culinary is an art form. I think that you know, auto mechanics is a science and an art form. And you know, there, there are certainly, you don't get to put your brakes together in three or four different ways, right? There's one way to do that, but I think that it is a very, cre it can be a very creative, um, expression for the you know the, the kids for whom that is a passion so it's not necessarily just about thinking you know of the the fine and performing arts as the only way to creatively express yourself is how can we get you know how can we expose to the kids there are lots of ways that you can express yourself creatively and and make that creative expression be I think the thing that we promote as opposed to a very limited subset of um, you know of, of discipline certainly there's studies that show that if you're a music student, you excel in mathematics and, and in, you know, in, the, in the STEM classes. But um, I don't necessarily think that that means we should force every kid to be a musician. I think that, that you know, it, what is it about music that supports those other, those other subjects? You know, let's think about what is it about other subjects that students who maybe aren't musically gifted, but they're in these other subjects, how can we translate that to them so that they go, yeah, you know what? I will try that, that does sound interesting to me. I think that I could be successful there. I am running for the board because I feel so strongly about what the school means to the community and what it means to the students that go through it. Not only the students that are there today, the students that were there 30 years ago. I mean, we have members of the board who are you know, alums of the school and we're going to have students who graduate in the future who are going to be on the board in the future. I think that that, that sort of continuity is critically important and that's what I'm most interested in making sure that we uh, that we preserve right we provide the very best education to all of the students and we preserve what the school means to the community and 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 grow it and make it better I think that you know I was just having a conversation this morning this community is uh, the entire Southland is on the verge of, of a renaissance and we need to make sure that we are a part of making that a reality